Hello, my name's Lucy and today we're going to be making uh, macaroni cheese and this will be a baked macaroni cheese with um, multiple cheeses. I've forgotten what number that I brought, um, it's probably at least three, maybe four. Um, and this is a recipe where I'm, uh, I'm doing basically a combination recipe, so I've taken inspiration from a book that's just called Pasta. Uh, which is a very big cookbook with lots of different pasta dishes in, a couple of which I've done before um, and liked, and also one called The Student Cookbook, which is what I got uh, when I was going off to be a student. Um, and uh, this one's the three cheese macaroni, that one's the baked macaroni, um, and basically I'm just using them as a sort of like a guideline for remembering all of the things that I need and roughly how much stuff that I need because uh, this one the student one makes two the baked one makes um, so enough for two the baked one makes enough for six um, and I want somewhere sort of in the middle of that I want sort of like three or four portions uh, so that I don't have to cook over the next couple of days I'm getting my jab tomorrow so um, uh, yes I've got uh, so the this one that I keep pointing you can't see the uh, one in the big pasta book um, makes a proper roux with uh, flour and butter cooked off first and then add the milk and whisk um, and the student cookbook one which is the one with the three cheeses just says like bung everything in a pot with flour um, so I'm going to do the roux properly um, and also I'm going to be careful when adding the cheese because I made a macaroni cheese once before where I just sort of just dumped all the cheese in in one go and it all formed into a lump in the middle of the milk and no matter how hot I got the milk I couldn't get the cheese to melt out of being this just lump in milk. Uh, so I'm going, and it was grated to start off with I add but it, yeah it just didn't work so um, I'm going to be careful about that so I'm going to get all my ingredients out um, and we're going to basically uh, see how we go on the, on the cheese front. I'm basically going to just add as much as I feel is right. So uh, we need this is interesting. We need a pan for the macaroni and a pan for the cheese. And I'm going like, and I was going to put the macaroni in the big pan, and do, um, but I'm thinking actually the cheese sauce is going to be quite large. So I think there's a large saucepan for the cheese, a uh, small saucepan for the macaroni. And, um, also going to need a cheese grater. I've realised that the cheese grater actually has, um, has some cheese stored in it and is in the fridge so I'm going to have to decant that. Um, and also the jug for measuring out the milk. Um, and we'll need a whisk and we'll also need the uh, flat spatulas for the roux. Doing the poking. We also need a serving spoon, a bowl to eat it in, for which I will need a uh, fork. And what else do we need? Oh, I need the pure because I'm baking it I need the big dish. Uh, which I did wash in preparation, that's the one thing I did in preparation because I was doing washing up anyway. Um, and it only needs washing because it's been in the uh, cupboard for a long, like obviously I'm not going to wash the saucepans because uh, I use them regularly. But this, I haven't used a dish that's this big uh, for a little while. So it's been um, sitting in the cupboard with other dishes in it um, and just gets a little bit dusty. So I just uh, run it under some soap and water, so there we go. So that's that. I don't think I need anything else from over here. Um, so I think that's it for, for uh, cooking influence. Oh, I need my scales. That's the other thing because I'm going to have to weigh out the flour. Because the thing about a brew is you do want to get them in the right proportions. All right. So for ingredients, I need the butter, which I keep in this cupboard. Oh, and I'm also going to need the foil for later, uh, when I cover it up. So we need the butter, the flour's over here. Yeah. Flour's in the back of the cupboard being something that I don't need day to day, so that's why that's so awkward to get at. So butter, flour, I'm going to need milk for the sauce. And then I need my cheeses, and I've got mozzarella, I've got apple with smoke, I've 
I've got some red Leicester and I've got some King Dam. So there's going to be a combination of those cheeses. And then I also want to add some bacon lardons and put some cheeky bacon on top. Um, because when I, for when I bake it. Uh, so there's that, which means I also need the frying pan to cook the bacon off, not the bacon, sorry, to cook the lardons off the bacon. I'm gonna put raw on top, and when I bake it for 20 minutes, hopefully that'll be enough to make it go crisp. This bit I haven't done before, so I don't know. It's basically, a lot of this is very experimental. Um, in that I know generally you cook macaroni, you make, you, you uh, like make a roux, add milk, add cheese, and that's a cheese sauce, and then you can shove it in the oven with some more cheese on top to crisp it up. And I'm using different types of cheese, and then to zhuzh it up, I'm putting uh, bacon lardons through the sauce, and I'm putting uh, unsmoked streaky bacon rashers on top, and I'm also going to sprinkle over some breadcrumbs. And I do have some Panaco breadcrumbs in the cupboard that are already open. So I'm going to use those. I'm just, just kind of piling everything on the side at the moment. Um, what else did I need? Oh, I need to get spices out as well because I'm going to put um, some mustard powder in. And I'm also going to put in a little pinch of cayenne pepper. I just need to find my cayenne pepper. That's coriander. This, these aren't roughly in alphabetical order, but then they've got to be shuffled. There's the cayenne pepper. Right, so mustard powder, cayenne pepper, and I'm also going to put in just a little bit of actual whole grain mustard. This is slightly fancy mustard because I bought it from uh, a food stall, a food stall in Bath a while ago, and it's got uh, it's beer mustard, which I've not noticed it being particularly beery, um, but it, it does taste good as mustard to go. Um, macaroni, the macaroni itself, that's quite important as well. This is why I do like some most of the time working from recipes because uh, this general sort of go right. Okay, have I got everything I need? Well, I haven't got a checklist because I'm adding things. So, uh, so I'll work this out by basically imagining what I'm going to do. So I've got some macaroni and a saucepan to put it in. I just need to add water and salt, so that'll cook. I've got some bacon lardons that I was going to stir through the sauce. They need to fry off in a pan. I've got a pan for that. Um, I'm going to make a roux, so I've got butter and flour and I've got the saucepan for that. And then I'll add milk, which I need to measure out with my measuring jug, which I've got out. Um, and then I need to add Get my measuring spoons, little bits of cayenne pepper, Coleman's mustard powder, and uh, mustard, and also a little bit of black pepper. Then I'll grate in some cheeses, and I've got my graters. And right, so I've remembered something I've forgotten, but I'll just carry on going in this order to get it done. So that will get mixed in with my whisk. I've got my whisk. So that's the cheese sauce. Then you'll mix the macaroni in the cheese sauce and the uh, bacon that's been fried off and you put it in the pan, uh, and you'll lay over the streaky bacon rashers, and you'll sprinkle over the panaco, and you'll also grate over a little bit of parmesan, which is in fact, this makes this um, a five cheese macaroni. <laughs> um, and it might even be uh, uh, sort of working out, depending on if I decide to put a little bit of ordinary cheddar in as well, just to smooth out the flavor, which would make it a six cheese macaroni. So I'm gonna grab my cheddar just in case. And I'm gonna find I've got some uh, parmesan somewhere. Yes. I've got some parmesan. So parmesan, panaco breadcrumbs go on top. And actually for doing the breadcrumb topping, I will want a little bowl because I want to just drip some oil over the breadcrumbs as well. Um, and incidentally, I'm not doing this uh, because like I said, I've got other flavors that I'm using. But if you weren't using the cayenne pepper and so much of the mustard and the bacon, if you wanted a different flavour, thyme uh, with the breadcrumbs works very well. A thyme flavour. Uh, but like I said, I'm not using that, so that's those ready. So that'll do that, so that'll sprinkle over, and then I'll put the bacon on, and I'll put it in the oven. And then later I want to cover it with foil, and I also want to serve it, and I've got this bowl to eat it out of. So that's everything ready, except for the, the actual cheese grater, where I've got the grater tops, but um, if you remember from the, bean, the uh, beanie wedges video, I grated the cheese and left it in the uh, cheese grater pot and obviously I haven't eaten the second lot of that yet, that's tomorrow basically, I like to alternate a bit, so um, 
the uh, I had the bacon and beanie uh, wedges yesterday. I'm gonna have cheese, macaroni and cheese today, and I'm gonna have uh, the rest of the rest of the wedges tomorrow, and then the macaroni and cheese the day after. So I'm gonna need to do this out. But since it's only had cheese in it, um, I shan't bother washing it because it's not no, nothing's gone bad into it, and there's no flavours that I need to worry about because it's all just cheese. So that's fine. So there we go. Right. So that's all ready. Um, and the other thing I'll just grab out now is I'm going to want my juice, so I'll take out my orange and mango juice. Ready, and I will in fact put the uh, bowl in the second oven ready to be heated. Um, I shan't start preheating the oven yet because there's a lot to do on the stove top. So now what I'll do is um, I'll fill this with water. So use, you always salt your pasta water, so a little sprinkle of salt. And then fill this halfway with water. Um, Stop it boiling over, basically. Right. So I think at this point you you should be due to be looking at everything that's on the side. <laughs> there's, there's now a, an absolute mass of things. So uh, what I'm going to do is just adjust things slightly, and then you can stand on here and look downwards. And this is also the thing you need to look that's going to let you look in the saucepan. So you're annoyingly on the wrong side, so I can't see every see what you're seeing clearly. So hopefully that's good enough. Right. So this is the general, just sort of mess of things that I've got here. So macaroni. So for six people, it says 450 grams. Uh, I, I tend not to weigh out pasta. I tend to just do it by eye, um, but I'm also very bad at judging. I think this time I am going to weigh. So, um, and these scales in particular, you can set them to it's in grams, set them to zero. But I don't quite want as much as 450, I don't think. On the other hand, other people do tend to be mean about it. I'll go for 400 grams. Come on, on zero, start. I'll go for 400 grams. Which is going to be about half of this bag, because this is a one kilogram bag that's a bit open. Oh, right. So that's 200 grams. That's 200. And that I'm not being too precise about. But, uh, that all goes in there. <laughs> the macaroni all bubbles. And there's a lid. And I'm going to put that, and I'll put that on to boil in a second, but I shan't start it now. Um, and there's a chance that'll boil over. So the pasta's done. The pasta will take 10 minutes to cook. So yeah, this is the thing that's going to lead to a lot of washing up, but at the same time, um, we don't need to uh, do it right this second. Or, sorry, or rather, there is a 20 minute period where it's cooking that I can use to do all of the washing up. Right, the next thing I'll measure out stuff for the roux, because that gives me the scales, and I'll put the scales away. So that's onto zero. And this I will use the exact amounts. It needs 50 grams of butter and 40 grams of flour. I just need a knife to cut the butter. There's 50 grams. That's 15. This may need to take all the butter I've got here. No, that's 43, so another thin slice should do it. 50 exactly. Way as I go just to make more space for myself. And 40 grams of flour. This is a big bag of flour and I need the tiny, the tiniest of amounts. So I'm just going lightly. And this flour is already very fine and it doesn't need to uh, be sieved. If it was uh, rougher because it had been left for longer, it would need it, but this is quite a new bag of flour. 
so 36, 37, 38, 39. It just didn't come out of that last bit, and there's now too much fudge. Now I'll need to scoop some out. Right, and that's 40 grams of flour. Right. The flour is always so messy. Some's got on the scales already, and that's just puffing up. That's got a lot. I'm going to put my apron on. I always forget. Oh, well, don't forget to wash your hands as well. Again, I washed my hands when I did the washing up, so I don't need to wash them again. Uh, but if you haven't washed your hands lately, then wash your hands. So that's there, ready to be cooked off. Wipe this down and turn it off, and then this can go away as well. Sorry, this is the scales that I'm talking about. Put scales out of the way. Flour out of the way, and already things are looking much improved in terms of space. Um, I'm not going to need that saucepan lid for this cheese saucepan either. Frying pan, which will be the bacon, will also go over there. So, um, milk I'll measure out now. Okay, this milk measurement is 475 mils, um, and I will use that because I'm going to use a lot of cheese, much more, I think, more cheese than this. Because this, the three cheese macaroni for two people calls for 180 grams of cheese. This baked macaroni for six people calls for 175 grams of cheese. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to end up, using, even if I'm only using a bit of each cheese, I'm going to end up using over that. So I will go to, at the very minimum, 475 ml of uh, flour, which also means it's the right amount for the amount of roux that I'm making. That's 450, so just another little tinkle, there we go. So that's the right amount of milk, and again, and I'll put that on there because I don't need that and the and the whisk until um, I've cooked the roux off. The bacon the top thing can go there. The things that are going to go in the sauce, I'm going to put there with the spoons to make them out. Now I'm just going to put some panaco breadcrumbs with some oil, salt and pepper in this bowl and stir them around a bit and grate in some uh, parmesan cheese and that will be the topping of the bread then. At which point we can start grating our multiple types of cheese. I hope you can see all of this by the way, because like I say, the, um, for me putting the camera there, because it was the only space for it, uh, this is the only, uh, it's the only place I can, see it, I can put it, but it means I can't see the screen very well. Okay, so there's some panaco breadcrumbs, and quite frankly, this packet uh, needs using up. So I'll just, I'll just use all of them, and if uh, I don't think I need this much topping, um, because I've also got the bacon on top. But if it uh, turns out that there's too much, I can just cover it up and use it on something um, a bit later. Right? I'll, I'll think of something to use it for. So that's that, um, and I'll just sprinkle the salt on now, and it's just a little sprinkle of salt, and a slightly bigger squeeze of pepper, and I won't use any more salt in this because like I say, cheese is quite salty. Uh, so I need to open this up, I don't know why I took the bag away, because this is Yes, and I'm also I'm not going to use the whole of the, all of these, for, these uh, multiple blocks of cheeses that I've got. Parmesan. So, this is going to make a nice, uh, nice brown topping. The temperature for the oven, by the way, um, I will say now is going to be 180 degrees and it will be for 20 minutes, although I might leave it for 25 when I see how the bacon's doing. The other option for the bacon uh, is 
crisp it in a pan with no oil so it goes very crispy and then and then basically break it in your hand once it's gone very crispy you can then break it in your hands over the top and I considered that um, but I want to see if baking it whole can get the same effect without so much effort and I've got like about that amount of cheese and I think I'm going to want a bit more but I'll just sprinkle that cheese on there what I'm going to do now is just, it's a drizzle, it's like literally less, almost less than a tablespoon, just a circular drizzle of oil and then I'm going to mix it through uh, with my hands. And again that just helps with the crisping, um, with the crisping of the uh, topping. So that's all mixed through and I'm just going to add that last little bit more cheese. And like you don't have to add it in two lots, it's because I'm doing this by eye um, and I don't want to over add so I'm doing a little bit at a time but I think that's enough. Right, so that's the topping already um, and the rest of the cheese I'm going to grate using the big grater and also I'm going to store the cheeses here because there's going to be more than fits in this tub. I'm just going to put this over the wash and put this knife over in the wash. So now I've just got some cheese grating to do in roughly the right amount. Um, oh, and I'll just open the mozzarella as well because the mozzarella is going to be wet, so I need to pour the water out into the sink. So this is going to be a complete mystery as to how much cheese it is. Also, while I'm doing this, I can now talk about um, theatre again. I watched Touching the Void last night, Bristol Old Bit live stream. It was absolutely fantastic. If you do get a chance to see it, either if they live stream it again, um, or if you're anywhere near the area and you can book a ticket, um, and you're obviously vaccinated and feel safe. Okay, I'm going to use about half the mozzarella, keep the other half back. I'm just going to tear it into bits. Um, just the staging was amazing there was um, and obviously I'm just this is just a place to store the cheese this isn't going to be cooked like this I'm going to put it in the pan this is just so that um, I've got a place to store this cheese um, and obviously you won't need to wash it in between because it's just just cheese which is going to into the sauce anyway so uh, yeah it was fantastic it had like actual climbing happening on stage it had a because it's, it's the true story, which I didn't realise it was going on because it's such a dramatic story. It is the... Uh, I also wanted to break... I, ended up with, I wanted Edam and this was the cheapest, so it's in slices, so I just need to break some up. Um, it's the true story of uh, Joe Simpson and Simon Yates, who uh, went climbing in Peru on a mountain... Um, and there was uh, basically an accident, Joe's leg got broken... Uh, Simon was trying and they were and they were completely alone there was like one guy who who wasn't a climber who was sitting in their base camp sort of five miles away um, and otherwise there were no rescue teams uh, no no people living nearby just absolutely so they were completely alone uh, on this uh, sh like almost sheer rock face um, and uh, Joe broke his leg Simon was lowering him down and there came a point where he got lowered down. He was having to brace himself um, on the cliff to, uh, I've used two slices of the Edam, to uh, every so often so that Simon could, could basically redo the ropes. Um, and there was one point where he got uh, lowered down over an edge where he had nothing to brace himself on. 
um, and Simon, and this was this was dark at night. There was a storm going. Simon couldn't uh, get Simon couldn't hear him, couldn't see what was going on, and he waited for an hour and a half. And when he didn't know what was going on, he had he was felt himself falling. He cut the rope, and Joe fell. And he fell, but he didn't die. And Simon obviously thought he was dead, had no idea where he'd gone. So he walked back to base, like eventually walked himself back to base camp. And Simon had to crawl. Uh, first, he abseiled down deeper into a crevasse, not knowing um, what was at the bottom, if anything was at the bottom. Um, and not knowing if his rope was long enough. Had to crawl across a snow bridge, which is a very fragile structure. Now I'm doing more grating. I'm probably going to use about half this block. Had to crawl across this snow bridge. Um, and then uh, had to crawl through an area of crevasses trying to find his way out because obviously still, his leg's broken in uh, more than one place. So he keeps doing that. And then has to go across some rocks. And just the way it was done, it was, you felt like, and this was like a lot, and, and the camera work was fantastic as well. So it kept zooming in his face. And he was actually sweating because they're wearing, doing the theatre, but they're wearing all these big thick parkas, so they're really hot. Tiny bit more, I think. And I think a small amount more of even, one more square of even. So they're wearing these parkas, so it's really, really hot. And also they're doing, the climbing was done on this fantastic metal structure made out of triangles with paper over it so you could see them kicking themselves having to burst through the paper to as if they were kicking into snow to get themselves places and using i there was a bit where he was using ice axes on the like and you can again you can see them digging into it's not the stage they've obviously got a wooden cover over it but digging in and literally pulling himself along the floor and just the physicality of it was fantastic um and it was an absolutely phenomenal uh phenomenal performance and um, that's done. And just really, uh, really tense. And like when, when he said it at the end, it was a true story. I was just like, because I was thinking of it. It's because it's because he was having to like. Well, the guy was obviously in pain. It was a bit where he, there, where he couldn't drag himself anymore because it, the ground was too rough. Because he was having to go over um, scree, and so he was having to make himself hop. Um, so obviously in agonising pain. Not only was the actor who was fantastic believably in agonising pain. But um, it just you just sit there thinking like the limits of human endurance and what we can put our bodies through and still survive and keep going, um, and uh, yeah, it was. And just think, and just think that's not, in some in some ways that's very terrifying that you wouldn't just die that you go through all that because 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 also he, he went because also because of the way they were climbing they were carrying just what they needed and it took longer than they thought so at the time he fell he already hadn't had um any food or water for nearly 24 hours and he was another 24 hours over dragging himself back to the base camp um so just the the amount that he survived so there's the applewood cheddar and this is looking like about the right amount of cheese. Um, I'll just put a bit more cheddar in. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to keep the cheese grater out in case I decide later I need more cheese. Um, but I am going to now pack up all of this cheese. These three cheese is going to go in one bag. Um, and the mozzarella is going in a different bag. This mozzarella is so wet and we'll just make everything else and also goes off a lot faster. But so yes, so yes, that's a fantastic play. The acting is all fantastic. I've only mentioned Joe there. There's um, three other characters. There's Joe's sister who he's hallucinating to get himself moving. So the play starts with a, it's essentially a fake out way. You know something's not right because um, like someone introduces himself and says, my name's Richard and Joe wasn't really paying attention so he doesn't know, so he doesn't know my surname. So you, so you know it's in Joe's head but you don't know if it's just as he's dying or what's going on. Um, but it, it's set as, as if it's at Joe's wedding. Um, 
And, for, and, and, he, and what's happened is being explained to his sister, and she's asking. And there's a, there's a lot about sort of like, but why was he there? Why was he doing it? Why would you risk yourself and do this to yourself? Um, and of course, and of course, the answers are Joe's answers as to, as to why he's there. Right. Now, first, I'm going to fry off the bacon. I think. Right. This is the other way around. There we go, that's perfect. Right there, so fry out the bacon. And I won't put any oil in. Oh, come on. I hate these pull tabs things because the pull tab was pulled off. So ah I've got into one half of it. It's, it's two halves, and again I only need one half of it. Um, so the, the actress playing the sister was also really, really good. Like doing the believable brief when she was um, being sad that he was dead but then at the end when he's going on she's driving him onwards and she's doing it by hitting his broken leg with a stick um, and again she just she just did phenomenally and then the other two characters are Simon the guy who has to cut the rope um, but again this is based on a real story so this did happen um, and apparently uh, the real Joe has, has said like his, his entire like life since then I would absolutely have done the same thing like I said, like uh, there were, he had no Simon had no other choice. Um, I absolutely would have done the same thing in this position because there's nothing else you can do. All that he could have done was carried on sitting there uh, until he essentially fell off the cliff because my weight pulled him down. So uh, that's that's that. So this is on sort of like a medium heat. I'm just going to poke this for a little while just to see how it goes. And I'm also going to pop on the, uh, the macaroni. Um, and I'm just putting that on the smallest type of hole, but on the highest heat. And I'm just going to let that go. Um, and once I notice it's boiling, I'll set the time for 10 minutes. But that doesn't matter if it boils longer. Yeah, just take the dress. Basically, I'll wait till it starts going crisp and take it off the heat, basically. So no more baby bird adventures, sadly. I didn't see the, uh, see the birds today. Which is a good thing in many ways, because I was doing more mowing and I don't want to injure them. I'm now paranoid that they're more in the long grass. So yeah, just leave those cooked. And these are like lardons, you never need to add oil really. Look at the amount that's coming off them. Like, oh, I, don't I, can add, I can make it lighter. Does that help? I don't know if that's improved or not, but there's a, yeah, there's a lot. There's ten to two bulbs, one of them's gone. It's been gone ever since I moved in here, and I can't work out quite how you change it. Or I can't work out what size bulb it is, and as soon as I open the thing to take the bulb out, you'll need to really put, a, put something back in before you start cooking again because otherwise they'll just, they'll just get greased and steam and the fitting and that's not great. And with lard on with small things like this, which I'm doing at quite a high temperature, um, you want to keep moving. And if I wanted to, I could have a bowl to put these in so that once I turn the heat off I can put them in the bowl and they immediately stop cooking, but I don't care so much. So basically as soon as they start to crisp I'm going to take them off um, and that'll be fine. Because yeah, I want nice crispy bits through the uh, through the macaroni. The thing about macaroni, the thing about pasta, is it always expands as it cooks. And I have a feeling this is going to expand out of the water and also possibly out of the pan. Which is why I sort of want to put it in the other pan, but the sauce definitely isn't going to fit. You can see it cooking. You can see it. Uh, 
making a nice brown skin on the uh, frying pan. Yeah, and once this baking's done, I'm going to start the cheese sauce. You can see they're just starting to go a little bit orange around the edges now, so another another minute or so. And again, I've not got a timer on for this, I'm just doing it by eye. Another minute or so, and these are probably good to go off the heat. But uh, there's also the book touching the, the play touching the void. It's based on the book touching the void, written by Joe about his experiences with contributions from Tyler. Um, and I've now put it on my to read list because um, I think that would be really interesting. It sort of made me interested in the entire subject of mountain climbing, which is obviously its own, its own very dangerous thing, where like the heroes are all people who died in slightly uh, horrific ways. So they're starting to go brown, and obviously the pan's going to stay hot. So I'm going to move that off and move that onto the, uh, not the heat. I'm going to turn that right down, and I'm going to put that on there, because that, now what I need to do... This pan's still hot, so I'm going to carry on turning the bacon around. And if I think it's not crispy enough later, I'll probably put it back on the heat for like 30 seconds to just crisp them up, but I think that's fine. Now what I need to do is I need to melt the butter. Um, and normally what you do, because I, I put them all in at the same time because I was weighing it, but normally what you do is you let the butter melt, then tip in the flour. And basically you're going to make a paste and you're going to cook the paste uh, for about four minutes until it browns slightly. And that's, that will make sure your sauce is nice and thick. But now I'm just... Uh, just I mean, you can see what's going on in there. It's too bright off the white pan. I think the light might be too bright on the white pan. That will be handy with the black pan, but not the white pans. This one looks lovely. That's just a lot boiling. So there's probably going to be some waiting before I can even put it in the oven. Why I haven't started heating the oven up yet because it's 10 minutes from that boiling um, in the oven. It takes a bit to heat, but not like that long. Okay, so the butter's all been absorbed into the flour now. It's not completely melted, but it's all been absorbed. So, so now it's about four minutes from now, um, and that I will time. And I'll also turn the heat up to sort of uh, medium heat to, cook, to actually properly cook it through. Um, and once that's cooked through, then I'll add the milk slowly while whisking constantly. Are the uh, instructions for making a roux into like that's that's also how you do a gravy only without it's not milk it's stock. This is basically the base of any base of a lot of sauces and also how you do a gravy, especially you'd have the flour and the butter, you'd mix them together. Um, you melt the butter, you'd add flour to make a paste, you'd turn up the heat and cook for four minutes until it's browned, uh, and then you'd gradually add your liquid, which in this case is milk, but for like a bechamel sauce, but for, um, for gravy would be like chicken stock and wine, uh, and you add it gradually while whisking and then keep cooking and that will make a nice thick sauce. Like without, with hopefully, well, in this case, there's also cheese, which we'll also thicken it, but basically without the meantime, corn flour to grate, which is all the fiddle. Okay, this is definitely boiling because the uh, pasta's come out the top of the water. I'm going to cover this over and I'm going to add some more water. Right, and you want to keep stirring as you do. This is, the, this is the annoying bit that I can't stop. Once I've added the milk and finished whisking, then I'll be able to do something to deal with the pasta. But um, so I'm going to need to boil the kettle and add some more boiling water because that's just uh, using the oil. You can see that this is. Hopefully, you can see. I'm going to turn the heat down slightly because it's bubbling so much, but hopefully, you can see. As it's getting darker and darker. 
And this is just cooking the flour through as well. So it's not giving it that raw floury taste. again where you have to keep physically doing something and have to keep keeping an eye on it so you can't really go and do something else except for have music on. I'm just going to put the heat back up again slightly. Because this still looks quite light to me but there was a lot of butter. I've still got a minute's worth of cooking to do. Another 30 seconds and I'll start adding the milk. Yeah, and as you can see now, that's gone much, uh, not a very darker brown, but it's much, uh, it's much browner, much, uh, much, much, uh, much more beige than it was. So yeah, For another 15 seconds will do it. So now you add some of the milk and stir, and stir and just keep keep whisking, keep whisking the milk through. This basically removes the lumps. Another way to remove lumps afterwards is to take a sand mixer. Um, like this should also prevent lumps if you constantly whisk as you add the uh, milk. But another, like if you end up with a lumpy gravy, what you can also do is um, afterwards take a sand mixer. See, that's boiling over while at the same time um, not covering all the water, not covering all the pasta. So you basically keep whisking, this prevents lumps. But if you do end up with a lumpy sort of gravy, a thing that you can do is um, take a sand mixer, like uh, the, the long ones. Uh, and like I said, I'm adding milk a bit at a time. Uh, take a sand mixer, one of the long ones, and just... Uh, just splits it um, and that will also get rid of the lumps. Yeah, here I'm stirring. I just need to take the things out from the corners and sort of wall this doesn't quite reach. I'm going to say that the pasta started cooking now. Or oh, 10 minutes. Right. And this I just want to whisk for a while so it's uh, proper consistency. Again, this metal implement on pans can scratch them, but this pan's already quite beat up. But I'll take the spoon and just take it round the edge, and that will take off all of the uh, stuff that we've got stuck in the corners. Ideally, I wouldn't have the lid on this, but I kind of want to um, make sure I'm absorbing all of the I don't want all the steam. I want the pasta to escape now. now poking the pasta because some of the pasta is on top and it's not covered by water which means it's not cooking properly. I should have got out a bigger. I don't really have it. I only got the two sauce. Well I've got other saucepans but like only a giant one. So I'm now pouring on boiling water to cover the pasta again. 
because it will cook some in the cheese sauce as well, so it's not like terrible. I keep saying all this and you can't see it. Basically what keeps happening is that this pot keeps boiling over. But anyway, um... Right, now I start gradually adding bits of cheese to this sauce. Um, and I'll basically add a little sprinkle at a time, stir till it's melted. The cheese is on a... The sauce, it was on a very low heat there. I've just turned it up slightly to just a low medium, I think. And just basically put it in stir mix. It's going to be a very thick sauce. Just keep whisking. And again, like I say, I'm not putting all the cheese in in one go because then it goes into one solid lump in the middle of the bowl. milk around it um, and at this point it is probably safe to turn the oven on to 180 degrees to preheat. This, yeah, this sauce is already very thick. I'm trying to add like a good mixture of the different cheeses at different times. Stir, stir, stir. top of the macaroni might not be quite done properly but to the rest I think will be. It should be fine. Keep stirring, keep stirring. So you can already see that that's all sort of coming together in a big loop. being distracted and also not working from a recipe so I'm going to crack the black pepper in. Put a nice chunk of black pepper, cheese and black pepper go well together. Black pepper cheese is very nice. In terms of this, I want, I think, half a tablespoon of mustard powder. Mm, that's actually quite a lot. It's like half of a half a tablespoon. It's like a quarter of a tablespoon of mustard powder. And I think just half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is quite strong, but have it a heaped half a teaspoon. It's definitely enough cayenne pepper. I'm not convinced on the mustard powder. I'll keep an eye on it. And also, ah, let's get that through. Nice. Stir that through, and also actually a tablespoon of mustard whole grain mustard. There we go. Tablespoon of mustard. And I think honestly that means there's no need to turn the mustard pan. So the spice is done. So now I've got I'm going to turn the heat right down again. I can start with the bubble. I don't really want the cheese to boil but we'll add the last uh, little bits of cheese. Sauce. Once more, poke at the macaroni. And again, we're going to pour boiling water over the top to top it up. cheese got stuck in the bottom of the pan. So the last of the cheese goes in here. There we go. And there's a bit of cheese stuck to the bottom of the bowl, but that doesn't matter. So obviously we're going to put uh, the cheese sauce in it anyway. Give that cheese sauce a last stir and uh, scrape in. Scrape in all the bacon. Nice 
of bacon. And I'm going to turn the heat off the sauce now because um, it's warm enough that it won't cool down before it has to, before it becomes a problem. There we go, it's overcooked. So sturdy. And again, this is the bacon through. I'm going to just stick the end of the spoon in and just taste it. Oh yes, that's got that's got a very big kick to it. Yeah, I don't think anything needs adding there. It's very strongly cheesy, and the cayenne has massively, uh, massively kicked it. Right, so I'm basically just waiting for the pasta to cook. She's got two more minutes to go. Handle in. Oh, yeah, I'm just looking at an um, empty stove top. Well, I'll move you further back because uh, what you're going to be looking at next. Come on. It's going to be me filling the dish. So. That's all ready to go. If they're stirring through, I'll just open up the bacon as well. And I'm going to stir it through in the dish basically because that's uh, easier. Also, there's a terrible mess of the stove top in terms of that water, which I'll need to wipe up um, soon because otherwise it dries to the stove top in a way that makes it very, very hard to clean. But also, you have to leave it so that it's at least cool enough and don't burn yourself. Right, there's the bacon. And I have deliberately also, this is more bacon than I need, I've bought sausages so I can have sausage, bacon and eggs, possibly with some uh, potato, potatoes made into oven chips later on. That there anyway then. So yes, now it's just now it's just where a case of uh, waiting. It's another thirty seconds on the pasta, and then, like I say, most of it will be cooked. Some of the top might not quite be cooked, but because it's going to go in the oven for twenty minutes, that should deal with it. Oh, and the other thing I need to get out is a bag for the uh, remaining bacon. There we go. And then there's a whole bunch of washing up to do. extract to put on because there's so much steam and that will hopefully help with it. Right now I'm going to go and
potassium also, also makes the good base for some sources, but uh, not this particular source, because obviously it's a cheese source. But uh, yes, there's six, that's only about <laughs> the macaroni, there's a lot left. Right, my glasses have unfogged again now, so I can come back on. And now pour over some of the cheese sauce. This is basically so I can give it a nice thorough mixing, so that uh, everything's covered in cheese. Honestly, I think I could have had even more milk, and it wouldn't have been a problem. And yeah, this is the this is the, this sauce is also you can see it's the right sort of texture, consistency. It's not um, runny, it's goopy. Now the rest of the pasta. Some of which has stuck to the bottom of the pan because of how much pasta I had in the pan. I think next time, or if I do this again, what I might do is uh, cook the pasta, put the pasta in the, put the pasta somewhere safe to wait, um, and then cook the pasta in the bigger pan, put it somewhere safe to wait, and then use the bigger pan again for the sauce, which has washing up in the middle of cooking, which is never ideal, uh, but is much better in terms of. Uh, Yeah, having the right size pans. That's that. And again. But look how full this is. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be, yeah, at least three portions, possibly four. try not to put my uh, saucepans on the side while they're still hot because I don't want to burn the side. I haven't managed to damage it yet and I've had the kitchen like four years. I said I had the kitchen, I've had the house four years. The kitchen is older. So I reckon it, and the people who had it before me had a small child, so I reckon it's quite sturdy. I know they had a small child by the way, A, because I saw her when I did the viewing, um, but also one of the bedrooms uh, was painted bright, shocking pink. Uh, which, is, which I, I talked to calling the awful pink bedroom, uh, and, I don't, and it's not like I think oh pink's a terrible colour, but it was it was offensively bright. And I mean, like, I'm saying this is someone who's painted their kitchen bright fucking yellow. That was a uh, that was glow in the dark pink. I've, I've painted it a nice peach. It, it, that is actually the most neutral of the bedrooms now, because my bedroom is a dark red with a white wall. Um, and the living room is three green walls and a blue wall. Oh, this is lovely. Look how lovely this is. This has got bacon and macaroni and cheese sauce. It's, and it's, it's very spicy. I think I probably should have put in less cayenne pepper. But it uh, doesn't matter. So I'm looking forward to eating this. Still cheese on the uh, saucepan. Mm. I'm just looking the whisk clean. Yeah, just gonna scrape, scrape out the pan. I'm very pleased with the consistency. Um, I am wishing I'd slightly. It's not um, painful to eat. I'm going to eat it just fine. But I am wishing I'd put in slightly less cayenne pepper because it's overpowering the cheese a bit. Um, I didn't want cheese to be the feature. I don't. I don't mind the mustard so much, but yeah, the cayenne pepper is cayenne pepper is very strong. Right, that's about as much cheese as I can get out of the pan. It's not hot at this point; it's warm. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. So. Breadcrumbs for sprinkling. I'm just a thin layer. And yeah, this is far too much breadcrumb. I don't want uh, don't really want more breadcrumb than that. But not far too much, but there's a bit left. So I'll put put some cling film over that. And bacon, I think I'm gonna go with uh, here's one rasher of bacon.
hopefully that will go brown and crispy. Right, I'm going to wash my hands. in the oven for 20 minutes and I'm going to go do some washing up. So, oh, I forgot to give my whole intro spill. Yeah. Sorry, into the oven we go. 180 degrees. Top shelf. For 20 minutes. Oh, I'm going to be ready to eat. What I do is I cook without doing any cuts. So um, you can see for yourself how long things are taking. Like someone just needs to say, okay, now stir that till it's mixed in, and then they do it, and it uh, speeds it up or cuts to it being done. And like, well, but I'd like some idea of how long it took, so I know I'm not overcooking it, so I know I'm not being paranoid when I when I leave it for ages, so I'm not going like, oh, it's too low because it's been doing this for ages and it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so in the fridge. Ready um, and some cling film. So uh, yes, uh, it also makes editing easy for me, of course. But yeah, it's um, I like to know how long things will take, or how long at least have a benchmark for it. Um, because if I don't know, then I'm paranoid that I'm doing it wrong. So. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. And the other reason is just so you can just sort of see sort of what it looks like when an ordinary person, because I'm not, I like cooking, I cook quite a lot, and I have done like a uh, week's cooking school for fun, this sort of thing. But I, you know, I've never cooked professionally, and, or, or even like seriously competitively, like bake, I never, never do anything like that. So it just gives you an idea of what it's like. Right. It's the sink. There. Just, that shows you a good view of the mess. There we go. Also, my tap has a leak. Right, so I'm also, I'm wiping up. There was a pan that I previously watched and left it dry on the side because I don't want it to get scratched uh, in the way, so I'm just. Drying it off with the towel the rest of the way, putting it away. Um, and these two pans. And I won't wipe down the uh, stove top right now, but I will probably try and get a little bit of it done uh, before, before it comes out. And yeah, I want to, even if you are washing these up now, you want to get them wet now, because once the cheese sauce dries, it'll be a nightmare to get off. But while it's still warm and running, it, it, it's just it's much easier to get off. Ah. I'm trying to think of what else I've got to entertain you with as I, uh, as I wash up. Washing up being another thing that uh, you don't see a lot of TV chefs doing it. Um, for the like, for some of the home YouTubers, it just means they're doing it themselves off screen, or they've got a, like, or at least they've got a dishwasher. Um, but for like telly cooks, they don't do their own washing up. They've got people. I remember the week's cooking course that I was telling you about, that was, which was really really good. It had basically a guy doing the pot wash. Like, that was literally his job, like we'd wash everything, when, once we'd done our bit of cooking, there were like the five of us all done, and we would go and put the, put the things we were finished using on the rack, and then he'd wash them, and he spent the entire day just washing up after us. <laughs> Poor bloke. I mean, if you don't like, if you, I, I don't like washing up, and also it, the, just the angle of things, that just makes my back hurt, so that's not great, but, um... On the other hand, I have worked as a cleaner, and I quite liked that. That was restful, as long as you can listen to audiobooks when you're cleaning. Um, I don't mind it. Um, and like a lot of places, try to stop you doing it. So basically, um, 
I ended up daring them at one point. It was basically I was working at Marks and Spencer's. You're not supposed to listen to. But at least I didn't even work for Marks and Spencer's. I worked for a contract cleaning company that did the cleaning for Marks and Spencer's. So, like, I could about direct people to toilets. I couldn't help them with clothes even if I wanted to. I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to fetch somebody else. But like, oh, no, no, you can't have an MP3 player in in case the customer wants to talk to you even though I didn't work for Marks and Spencers and um, even though sometimes I was cleaning backstage anyway. So I just used to, when I had slightly longer hair then, so I just used to um, keep the MP3 player in a pouch that I sewed into my jumper. Bring the cables up under the jumper um, and hide the, and I had very good ear bits. Well, they weren't very good ear bits, but they were useful ear bits because they, they were from a tour bus and so they had actual clips that sort of, uh, they weren't in ear earbuds, they were clip-ons, but I, um, but they clipped on very, very nicely and I uh, wore them under my hair um, and basically, um, I feel like my fault was probably new, but as long as I wasn't being too obvious about it, I could get away with it. And it's like, cleaning's boring, just let people listen. And like I say, if that, if that earned enough to live, I'd probably go back to doing it because, um, it was... <laughs> I didn't mind it, it was good exercise. And um, just, like yeah, just if you could just be on your own, listen to audio books all day, that's kind of, that, was, that was kind of ideal. It was very, very nice. And this is some really good audio books. And like I say, but it's uh, hard to, I'll make a living because the hourly pay isn't very good. Um, so for cost of living, it's not great. And then, um, yeah, if you end up with an efficient boss, it's like, no, no, you absolutely must um, take your earphones out. Then that's just rubbish. And obviously, at the moment as well, it's uh, one of those jobs where you're in not necessarily high contact with people, but high contact with um, environments that have had a lot of people in them, which is almost as bad. So at the moment, it's not exactly the safest profession, uh, especially for civilians. Basically, uh, not just uh, NHS staff as well, but not just them, also cleaners. Uh, everybody should get uh, cleaners, shop staff, cashiers, everybody should just get um, anything where they've had to have contact with the public on a repeated basis, you just have a massive bump in pay. It's not going to happen, um, and the minimum wage should be raised, raised anyway, uh, just also in general, but specifically for people who've had customer service uh, facing conditions and have had to have essentially essential, occupa an essential occupation during this should be paid more for what they've gone through. But hey ho, if I were in charge of the world. I talk about this with my nan um, on the phone. I phone, I phone her. Every, ever since this started, I've been phoning her once before, which is quite nice because I do get, I do, I do love my nan and I do get on very well with her. But previously, um, I'd see her sort of at Christmas and on my birthdays and phone her once or twice a year. Um, and having regular chats is nice. Um, but no, we sort of end up talking about politics and like, oh, if we, if we, if we were in charge of the world, what a better place it would be. But anyway. Um, on more cheerful subjects, um, yes, like I say, my jab is tomorrow. Um, my first jab, I'm very, oh, thank goodness. Um, I, it's basically, as soon I, I've been watching websites to see when it would open up, I'm 32, when it would open up for my age range. Um, and as soon as it did, I like, I, I was like in there and booking before I even got the text about it. The letter saying from the from the NHS saying you couldn't start booking if you haven't already arrived today. Um, and like I say, I made my appointment on Saturday and I've got it tomorrow. Um, and then the tech got the text on Monday. But yes, it's um, so I've got that to look forward to. And then my next one's in August, and uh, that'll be good. And then uh, my. But also tomorrow, um, I've got another live stream to watch, and it's not, it's another studenty production, it's called Marie Antoinette, so it's about Marie Antoinette. Um, from, again, from the egg, this is an egg live stream. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, and I can fill you in all about it once I've... Uh, 
once I've uh, ha had a watch. How long is it time? I can't see from here. But uh, it should have plenty of time. I might go and have a look at the thing and turn it around just to see how it's doing in a second. But I've only got now, now I've got the £3 to wash the frying pan and the saucepans. And then I just need to, I'm not going to wipe down the side um, because I'm going to drop, I know I will spill some stuff. Or oh, 10 minutes to go, so I'm just going to turn up the heating. Turn the heating. I'm going to turn the heating on my uh, warming up pan. Uh, and yeah, the, I'm, I'll wipe off that bit of water that I said would be a pain, but I'm not going to wipe down the side because I, what I'm going to do is dripping cheese sauce everywhere. Uh, we just need to wipe it up again. So, again, minimise the amount of work for yourself. Yeah, this pan's supposed to be non-stick and has never been non-stick. It's really weird because I got all the all these pans at the same time, and all the others non-stick ones worked fine. But this pan I very rarely use, and even even though I've barely used it, it still um, it still sticks. And I still need to give it a little bit of a scour to get stuff off, even though there's no particular reason for it. But yes, yeah, so I'm just going to wipe up these pans, wipe that bit of the side, and then I'm. I'm just waiting to eat. It's nice and clean. And just to avoid the game scratch further. <laughs> Even though it's already pretty scratched, I leave it on the side here to dry rather than in the drying rack. Okay. I need to scrape out the pasta that got a bit stuck to the bottom. It didn't burn to the bottom, it's just because there was uh, so much pasta it got very sticky at the bottom. So it's more like gluey than that. It's, it's gluey, not burnt. So scrub that out. I've run out of things to say, so I'm just getting on with the washing up. Um, I've got Scott and the Brave stuck in my head. Um, I, shan't, I shan't inflict my singing on you. Again. See, this is why you want to wash things up quite quickly, or at least keep them full of water, because uh, this is gloopy, but mostly just <coughs> slides right off now because it hasn't had a chance to dry. If it sets on it, it's a massive pain. Although if anything where the food sets on it, what you want to do is then fill the pan with boiling water, and that will usually... Um, I mean, even, you can just use really hot water for your tap, or if it's still getting stuck, you can either put it on the stove top or fill your kettle and boil it and put it the boiling water in, and that will shift it a bit. But, uh, done. Yeah, my back is uh, very much starting to hurt now from all that leaning because I had to do a, quite a large load of washing up. But the bonus is because I've done uh, this washing up now, the only things left to wash up are the tray that's uh, like the bowl and spoon that I'm going to eat with, uh, the serving spoon, and then the tray the macaroni is in, which also won't need washing up straight away because it's got a couple of servings in it. And I'm going to what I'm going to do is cover it with foil um, and put it in the oven as a tray rather than portion it out into different, uh, different boxes. And then also when I cook it, I can, re I can, I can put it in a bowl and heat it in the microwave or I can um, heat it up in the oven and I'd probably do some kind of combination because the oven's a bit of a, bit of a hassle for something this... Uh, okay. And now there's just the bits left that I need to uh, throw in the bin. The oven's a bit of a hassle for just macaroni and cheese. Um, even if I want to get a grass topping. Right. So, washing up done. So we can go back over to the stove. Just 
them. Just do revolutions. There we go. It's like, I, I, I can't even... My hands are slipping, right, uh, so I can't point it properly, so I was just guessing, and that's, that's turned out quite well. So we have a look at this, see how it's doing. Well, the bacon's not crisp, but the uh, breadcrumbs are going. So I've just turned it round. I might give it another extra five minutes, because it's got five minutes to go, and I might give it five minutes after that. Um, so I'm just now going to wipe up that bill that I said because, because it's been 15 minutes the stove top will cool down enough that I won't burn myself um, and I just want to get the water because the thing about pasta water is it's, it's not pure water anymore it's uh, got because it's had the pasta in it and it's been cooking it it's got it's gone starchy um, which means that instead of just being water then when it dries and it's invisible it dries and it leaves a, a white film which then is a real it, it does once it's dried on it doesn't shift like you just wash it you think oh I've scrubbed it off and then it's dry and then it needs water to dry and the white film comes back so I'm going to try and avoid that by absorbing it first but yes also I will always wipe down my uh, stove between uses like as part of my leaving the washing up for tomorrow, I also generally leave the stove till tomorrow, but then before I cook, I do the washing up and I wipe down my cooking surface um, and the stove top. And it stops any food getting burned to the earth and stove. So I've had this oven for four years now. I bought it when I got the house. And um, unlike, I mean, it's black, so it doesn't show things as badly, but unlike many other stove tops that I've seen, that, like gas hobs that I've seen that. Uh, people have. It doesn't have bits of burnt food stuck to it and thousands of crumbs um, and just generally dirty marks. It's, uh, it's very clean and that's because I never, it's always clean when I cook off of it. There's no, uh, there's no dirt that's got burnt on because as soon as you burn stuff on then that makes it much worse. And I am going to do, I'm currently doing like a very slow, like cupboard at a time deep cleaning in my kitchen. I'm going to deep clean the top. And actually, instead of just using water, which I usually use, or a uh, washing up liquid, which I use occasionally, I'm going to use the, the sort of like special degreases to just get everything thoroughly uh, scrubbed. like obviously bacon splatter and cheese splatter but that I'm leaving because that's less once I'm, when I'm going to wipe that up I can just wipe up um, it won't be it won't make a film or a dirty mark like the uh, like the pasta water so it's uh, less urgent right. around two minutes to go but as I say I'm probably going to give it another five after that so uh that's uh, been a good lot of cooking. So I've got my tray with my knife and fork. I'm going to put this in the other room, ready. Okay, so it's much warmer here than it is in the other room as well because of the cooking and the hot steam and things. Uh, my glasses are a mess, so I'm going to clean them off. Right, one and a half minutes to go. I'm just going to look now and see if I am going to take it out or not. The bacon is just starting to crisp, so yeah, I think five minutes will do it. So I'm going to shove five more minutes on the timer. There we go. That was more beeps than that. I pressed the wrong button. But now we've got so we've got six minutes to go. Um, I, actually, I, actually, well, I have two chairs in the kitchen, I've got one chair that I've been using to, st uh, to I've got a breakfast bar chair which I use to keep my coat on and then I've got a chair that I've been using to stand on to do some of the cleaning. So I'm going to sit myself down because, oh, my legs are getting a bit stiff. Oh. Um, and I will take hold of the camera, I'm just going to pick out a 
Pick out a poem. Ah, Rudyard Kipling, A Smuggler's Song. So here we go. If you wake at midnight and hear a horse's feet, don't go drawing back the blind or looking in the street. Then the task's no questions, isn't told a lie. Watch the wall, my darling, while the gentlemen go by. Five and twenty ponies trotting through the dark. Brandy for the parson, backy for the clerk. Laces for a lady, letters for a spy. And watch the wall, my darling, while the gentlemen go by. Running round the woodlump, if you chance to find. Little barrels, roped and hard, or full of brandy wine. Don't you shout to come and look, nor use them for your play. Push the brushwood back again, and they'll be gone next day. If you see the stable door setting open wide. If you see a tired horse lying down inside. If your mother mends a coat cut about and tore. If the lining's warm and wet, don't you ask no more. If you meet King George's men dressed in blue and red. You be careful what you say and mindful what is said. If they call you pretty maid and chuck you neath the chin. Don't you tell where no one is, nor yet where no one's been. Knocks and footsteps round the house, whistles after dark. You've no call for running out till the house dogs bark. Trusty's here and pinches here and see how dumb they lie. They don't fret to follow when the gentlemen go by. If you do as you've been told, likely there's a chance. You'll be give a dainty doll all the way from France with a cap of Valences and a velvet hood. A present from the gentlemen, a longer being good. Five and twenty ponies trotting through the dark. Brandy for the parson, backy for the clerk. Then that asks no questions, isn't told a lie. Watch the wall, my darling, while the gentlemen go by. So yes, that's uh, a smuggler song by Rudyard Kipling. And I like that one. Again, it's another one where it's just, it's, it's just a pleasure to read. There's the rhyming scheme and the thing. And it's, it's amusing and it's humorous, uh, just in a, like a, uh, not in a laugh out loud way, but just in a, oh, that's a nice way. And just, uh, just like the rhythm of it right okay well it's my book is now fallen op open to I'm gonna swap hands The Fiddler of Dooney uh, by William Butler Yeats when I play on my fiddle in Dooney folk dance like the wave of the sea my cousin is a priest in Kilvarnet my brother in Mocharibari I passed my brother and cousin they read in their books of prayer I read in my book of songs I bought at the Sligo Fair. When we come to the end of time, to Peter sitting in state, he will smile on the three old spirits, but call me first through the gate. For the good are always merry, save by an evil chance. And the merry love the fiddle, and the merry love to dance. And when the folk there spy me, they will all come up to me, with here is the fiddler of Dooney, and dance like a wave of the sea. And that's just, I just like that, again. Um, it's, like, it's, again, it's a, ha it's a happy poem. It's about, it's about someone dying, and yes, it's happy, and it's basically just, like, about living a good life according to your lights. So, yes, I like that. Um, we're on two minutes to go, so I've got time for, I think, a short one, if I can find a short one that I want to uh, read. Ah, Street Boy by Gareth Owen. Just you look at me, man, stomping down the street. My crombie's stuffed with biceps, my boots is filled with feet. Just you hark to me, man, when they call us out. My head is full of silence, my mouth is full of shouts. Just you watch me move, man, steady like a clock. My heart is spaced on blue beat, my soul is toned on rock. Just you read my name, man, writ for all to see. The walls is red with stories, the streets is filled with me. Like I said, Street Boy by Gareth Owen. I like that one. And again, that's a, that one was a fun one to read. That's a, a good blood pumping one. Right, so we've got a minute to go. So I'm going gonna to get out the, uh, the bowl. And when I stir things up, by the way, I will put it over here. I put them right over here because I put it... Um, I put the hot thing on the stove top, that's so that it doesn't burn the side. And then I put the bowl as close to it as possible so that if I drop it, um, it doesn't uh, make extra mess. It goes, it goes where mess already is. Oh, 
30 seconds, and I'm going to leave the door shut. Uh, slightly, slightly because I could, partly because as I said, as I've said before, there's a fat splatter on the oven door, which I will eventually clean off. But also because the uh, light in the oven is very yellow, um, it means it's very hard to see um, if things have browned or not. Like a whiter light would give you better colour. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to cook it anymore because I'm hungry. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Four, three, two, one. I would like, uh, but it is slightly crisp. The bread comes and toast it. And it's a nice big bowl. Oh, so I'll, just, I'll just show this to you now. Look at that. You can hear that noise it's making as well. It's so hot. Right. So, I'm going to peel off one of the strips of bacon. And we want one bit of bacon. And then we're gonna scoop out the baked pasta. Crispy top. And I'm just gonna scoop out a very big portion. Because like I said, this is gonna this is going to feed me for at least three, possibly four days. So I can just take as much as I like, which is always the best kind of food. Oh, that's nice. There we go. out. Just pop that on there. And there, it's all dished up. I'm just going to pop this serving spoon in the sink. So, that's all ready for me to eat. My bacon's under there. As you can see, it's a nice big bowl of cheesy pasta. So, I'm looking forward to eating that. And as always, I will be back in a little bit after I've eaten it to tell you what it tasted like. I can tell you now, it's going to be fantastic. So, a bon appetit. So, I've eaten the macaroni cheese. Oh, and it was very, very yummy. I did very much enjoy it. I think I did put in slightly too much cayenne pepper. It did slightly overpower the flavours of the cheese. I mean, not enough to stop me uh, enjoying it or eating it. But it was... Um, some of the cheese was drowned. Otherwise, the cheesy mix was very, very good. I don't know if having that many cheeses in added anything or if they just cancelled each other out. I'm not sure. But it was a very nice cheesy sauce. Um, and the bacon on top. Even, if I, even though I hadn't got it crispy... Um, it was still, the flavour was still excellent. The little bits I had with the bacon on top were really, really nice. So yes, that was a very enjoyable meal and I'm going to enjoy it for the next couple of days. Bye-bye now.